Live from Johannesburg, this is Tonight with Jane Dutton. Tonight, it's round two for Patricia DeLille. The Cape Town mayor faces yet another no-confidence vote. What will she do next? Is Welichle the next Marikana? People are trapped after police enforce a two-week lockdown. How is the mayor going to solve the problem? We'll ask him. And Zimbabwe's president threatens to arrest his only real opponent. What's Nangagwa so frightened of? Tonight with Jane Dutton. Is this the last night for Patricia DeLille as mayor of Cape Town? How sure is she she'll survive tomorrow's vote of no confidence? That's my question for her. What's yours? We'll take your tweets and calls first, though, Shahan, has the day's news. All right, thanks for that, Jane. Appreciate it. These are our top stories tonight. Zimbabwe's main opposition party is slamming the country's electoral commission. MDC leader Nelson Chamisa is accusing authorities of favoring the ruling ZANU-PF. He says the vote won't be free and fair. Despite this, he says his party won't boycott Monday's poll and is confident the opposition will win. We have a Zek that has chosen to throw away the whistle as a referee and join another team, particularly the ED team, Munangagwa's team. And this is why Munangagwa is not complaining, because the team is playing on his behalf. But what we have resolved to do is to make sure that we defeat both the referee and the player. Mr. Munangagwa and Zek must both be defeated. Defeated in terms of the overwhelming sentiment in the country that we are not going to allow them to get away with murder literally and metaphorically. South African TV personality Sashi Naidu has been denied entry into Israel. She says she was trying to visit Palestine to learn more about the territory conflict there. In response, Israel says its laws denies entry to those seeking to harm the country. Naidu has been criticized for supporting Israel and using a derogatory term to describe Gaza. She later apologized. The model is in, currently in Jordan from where she was supposed to cross over to Israel. ESCOM's 33 billion rand loan from the China Development Bank has sparked interest from various sectors, but the power utility is warning unions the money won't be used for bonuses. Wage talks have un unions uh, deadlocked at the moment. There are fears of possible load shedding if an agreement is not reached soon. Well, the, the power grid currently is stable. We haven't had load shedding actually since uh, uh, that week of uh, June 16. Things are looking good at this stage. But obviously everything is relative in life because uh, we have had the unions, uh, at least uh, two of them saying they, they are not going to accept uh, the fact that uh, there's no bonus. And uh, one of the unions uh, was on, uh, on in the media essentially saying their members might do things that uh, will put ESCOM under pressure. I don't know what that means. If it means that uh, people are going to trip things down again, then clearly it means that we as a nation are in deep trouble. From our side, we have put our uh, books on the table to show that we don't have money. President Cyril Ramaphosa wants Africa to benefit from the BRICS summit. He says the establishment of the continental free trade area will create opportunities. Ramaphosa was delivering the opening address of the 10th BRICS summit. Africa's working age population is expected to double to 1 billion people in the next 25 years. More opportunities are also going to be presented by the agreement to establish the African continental free trade area, which provides access to a market of well over a billion people and a combined GDP of three trillion US dollars. Those are the headlines. Back to Jane. Thanks very much for that, Shahan. She's the leader of Cape Town for now. After eight years together, a divorce from the DA could be imminent tomorrow. Patricia DeLille's party will decide her fate. Tonight, though, she's my guest. Tweet us with the hashtag tonight with Jane Dutton. Our phone lines are open if there's anything you want to say or ask her. And the number is found below on the screen. Patricia DeLille, 
it's very good to have you with us. I should imagine uh, there's a, a level of fear ahead of tomorrow. Are you going to survive? No, no fear at all. You know, ever since I was very young, I've been fighting. I fought in the struggle against apartheid. Today I'm still fighting for equality, for better services for our communities. And it's never been a personal fight for me to get any personal gain out of it. And I will continue to fight for our communities in our country. Um, today you see career politicians who are in there for their personal gain. For me it's not about That's personal, pretty personal gain. It's fighting for my rights that, yes. Excuse me? I said, you say it's not personal, but tomorrow there's a no confidence vote in you. That's pretty personal. Yes, it is personal, but I've been fighting all my life and I will continue to fight. Uh, but it's not for my personal gain, it is for the community of the city of Cape Town. I've always put the people of Cape Town first. And that is what the fight is about. Yes, if I lose tomorrow, uh, then so be it, let it be. But I will continue in any position, I can serve my country in any position to continue to fight for the cause that I believe in. And that cause is that we're celebrating 100 years of Madiba's birthday. The late Robert Sabukwe, Steve Bantubiko, those people didn't die um, in vain. We must continue to fight for those values and principles that they stood for. They didn't suffer from the sort of serious accusations and allegations leveled against you and we will go back to the vote of no confidence but we've had the Bowman's investigation the Steenhausen report the city of Cape Town um, into your yeah. conduct as mayor it's a prima facie case of gross misconduct I mean shouldn't you just step down from the mayorship just for <laughs> those alone <laughs> Well, you know what? Fortunately, I fought for these rights in our country. I know my rights. If I am the accused, and I am saying that when these untested allegations get tested, it must be in an open media platform where the public can hear my response. I fear nothing. I only fear my God. And the people are, are these who are trumped up all charges then? And if there are they trumped up charges, as evidence. you seem to suggest, where's the proof that there are trumped up? Where, yeah. How can you prove your innocence? Well, the. the I will prove my innocence if the people are making these charges and allegations bring the evidence. You know, Jane, I had to turn to a court of law to compel the people that are making those allegations to bring the, alleg uh, to bring the evidence that it can be tested. And that process is ongoing. I have to go back to court on the 1st of November because we still have a very independent judiciary. And when you have a dispute of interpretation of rights, you turn to the courts to provide that interpretation. And that's what I have done three times successfully. So yes, the day must now come where those allegations can be tested, but the people must give their names that made the allegations, they must give me the date when it happened, they must give me the evidence, and so that I can defend myself, Jane. Okay, that and in is the meantime, what is still missing in this whole saga. Okay, in the meantime, tomorrow, you face this vote of no confidence. I mean, what are your chances of survival? And this is yeah. the second time that you're facing this vote. Isn't it time to walk away? I mean, clearly there are a lot of people there that don't want you. In the, in, in, in the meantime, I am innocent until proven guilty. We are all equal before the law. We are all subject to the Constitution. We are building a democracy where the rule of law must be paramount. And yes, it is people's rights to put in that vote of no confidence um, on all untested allegations that has never been tested anywhere. And so I, I respect their rights too because I'm a Democrat. I believe in human rights. But where I feel that my rights have been violated, I also have a right to turn to the courts, to say to the courts, I feel that my rights have been violated. Can you intervene? So it well, is for, a so process. Excuse me jumping in here Next again. week it will be exactly one year. Okay, a lot of people yes. thought that you were stalling rather than 
clearing your name? I mean, do you think tomorrow is possibly a chance to clear your name? And if you don't clear your name, and if you lose this vote, what happens to you? Will you take this to the courts? Where do you go? Well, you know, the truth sometimes takes very long to come out. But the truth always survives. And I've got the patience and I've got the commitment to wait for that day to come. And I'm only saying, give me the space to clear my name. My name is being smeared in public, and so I need to clear my name in public. And yes, so then, it I mean, is I mean, who, long. Who wants to bring no this shortcuts. on you? What, what sort of camp yes. is creating this? Well, you, you know, there, there, there are a lot of personal uh, differences or, you know, but I mean, I didn't really join politics to be liked. I've joined politics because I'm fighting for a cause. I'm fighting against inequality. I'm fighting against landlessness, homelessness. And so we must never exercise our differences at the expense of the community of the city of Cape Town. All right. Let's go back to 2014 at a press briefing where you spoke about why you joined yes. the DA and what your aspirations were. Yes. Well, I am still committed to that project. Sorry, uh, Mr. Dillil, we were waiting for a, a bite to come through there, but I, I don't think it's going to play out. I mean, basically, you spoke about the values of redress, reconciliation, delivery, and diversity. I mean, have you been able yes. to achieve that within yes. the diversity. DA, and do you still stand yes. by that? I am still committed to those values. I'm still committed to the project that I started with Helen Ziller, and that is to build an alternative in this country, as to build a society based on values of redress, reconciliation, diversity, and delivery. I have internalized those values, and in my day-to-day -day work, I always exercise those values to make sure that it's not personal about me, but it is about a bigger project. Yes, I'm still committed to those values. Okay, but if you were living out the DA's ideals, where do you think the clashes came from? You know what? I have been, the past five years, as being the six years, I've been the mayor of the city of Cape Town. I have attempted to bring about what is required by all of us in our constitution and that is to build a, a, a nation united in our diversity to transform society and that is what I've been doing in the past five years. Okay, now if really there are people who have not and internalized... I know you were trying to redress the imbalances there. That didn't no, work, did no, it? No, 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 no. Can I can, can, I, can I invite you to Cape Town one day? I will take you. I spent four hours in Masipumalele today where I'm working together with the Public Protector and the Human Rights Commission to deal with all the challenges in Masipumalele. And the, for the first time this morning, more than 300 people said, thank you, Mayor. So it is about getting the confidence of the community, delivering what the community is expecting from government. And that is what gave me a peaceful night every night because I can sleep knowing that I've done my best for that day. Okay, Mayor, can I bring in on the line Earl from Krugersdorp? He's got a question for you. Go ahead, Earl. Hi. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Delal. Uh, it is quite clear that the DA is doing everything in their power to get rid of you, but be that as it may, I have two questions for you. One, is Wissi Maimani really in charge of the DA or is somebody pulling the strings from behind? And two, is Natasha Mazzoni being unceremoniously being brought up to actually replace him after the 2019 elections. Thank you, Earl. How do, how do you respond to that? Well, I think that is all speculation. I can't speak for Natasha Mazzoni. She must speak for herself. If she's got ambitions to become the mayor of the city of Cape Town, she needs to be elected in that position. 
as far as the leader of the Democratic Alliance is concerned. The only thing that I expected from the leader, and I told him this so, leader, please make sure that I'm treated the same way in terms of the constitution of the DA and the rules of the DA. So uh, the leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musim Amani, um, has been part of this process right from day one. And so in the end, if we find this amicable solution, it must be to consider what the leader of the Democratic Alliance wants for the party, but also to consider what is my right in terms of the party constitution and the country constitution. Patricia DeLille, do stay with us. Thank you. Because we're going to have a little break next, and we're also going to be taking in your calls. This is Tonight with me, Jane Dutton. See you soon.